everybody welcome back to the channel welcome to all my new subscribers if you're new to the channel um, new to so alongs here welcome 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 today's video is all about the cashmere upton dress so i had started talking about this maybe november december of last year that i was going to do the sew along and so here we are we are here i'm gonna jump into it because there is a lot you know how i like to roll with my sew along there is a lot of information i like to cover feel free to fast forward past anything that you don't think is relevant uh, for you part two and part three um, part two tomorrow will show you we'll be working on the uh, skirt piece first and I'll explain why in just a moment and then the third and final part will be the bodice and um, putting everything together so let's go ahead and jump right into everything first of all if you do not have the pattern i will leave a link to the pattern it's not an affiliate link at all however i was given permission by cashmere um, jenny rushmore to do this sew along um, so there is a link down below again not an affiliate link at all just a link down below um, currently it is march 20 let me see 20 ninth i think when you'll see this <laughs> and so um right now she's just offering um pdf patterns only um so you can't order any of the physical patterns at the moment but you, you can go to her website and read all about that so um for those who don't know i have sewn this is probably be my fifth upton um and if you're part of the cashmere uh facebook group you know there are people who've sewn like a dozen or more of these because <laughs> they really are very nice dresses to put together once you get the hang of it and once you work out some tweaks and we'll go over all of that um and so um you can also just for those who who did not know no, the um, cashmere up. sizing it goes up to a lot of her patterns have um she's updated to include a size range from 12 to 32 however the upton my last check at the time of this video um, is still showing up to a size 28 however you do have your cup sizes from c through h so i would check the um if you think you might fall outside that size range um in the 28 12 to 28 is a nice size range but we'll go over the sizes here in just a moment um check back on the website frequently um and get on her email list and then you'll be able to know when those updates have happened so we are doing view b and we are doing the v-neck i am going to show you i have one on now um and we will be doing back However, I decided not to do a low V back. However, you can still do a low V back if you choose. And we are doing the gorge skirt. So pretty much view B except for my back. Um, my back has been raised up. Um, one of the things I also want to point out, depending on your size, um, the measurements that you take, do make sure that you get fabric wide enough for your pieces um, and you can fudge with 45 um, inch wide fabric um, if you want but me personally um, just because I know if I, I'm gonna work with larger sizes I just rather not try to fudge and play around with um, 45 inch uh, with fabric that's just my personal preference you can do whatever you like that's just something um, I will highly recommend that you work with something that's between 58 and 60 inches now if you can get it out of if you can get fabric wider than 60 inches which I know um, Joanne fabrics do sell because I made a dress <laughs> before out of their specialty cottons which were i think they were 112 wide i mean it was it was it's, and it's not a lot of it um yeah um different patterns of it but it did come in some fun colors um you do want your um your upton to be it is recommended until you get used to it um a woven fabric so that is either cotton linen double gauze or upholstery weight fabric uh your lining will also need to be a lightweight woven such as a cotton lawn a rayon bimberg or silk crepe de chine i will say as you get used to making the upton and there are several people that have done it they have made this in a scuba 
So, you know, a scuba is um, and a ponte I've seen. They'll, those are a little way more structured nets, way more. Um, and so not a lot of, especially more so maybe scuba um, than the ponte, not a lot of um, that much stretch, a little bit of stretch. Um, so you want to take that into consideration consideration if you do decide to use something like that but maybe for your first one I would just stick to the fabric recommendations that are in the pattern and having said that as we go through this process I also highly recommend for your first um, Upton do a muslin do a muslin not for the entire dress you can if you want However, um, just to see how it would look completely on you. However, I highly recommend doing the bodice only. Um, doing that, um, getting your muslin, getting your um, fit together first out of muslin fabric and then transferring those um, changes onto your pattern pieces and then going ahead, moving with your fashion fabric, putting everything together. I'll share with you in, in just a moment the fabric that I will be using. So you can use a regular, um, regular sewing machine, domestic machine, and um, your uh, standard needle um, for this. The seam allowances are all half inch. Most of cashmere patterns are half inch, but there are some that are three eighth inch in, in different um, <clears throat> different uh, stitch lengths. And so as we go into <clears throat> areas where you need to stay stitch and all of that, I'll just show you that as part of the sew along. <clears throat> excuse me instead of um talking about that at this point so let me share with you the fabric that i will be using i am using a linen um rayon no linen oh my gosh cotton linen cotton blend i believe I don't remember it's <laughs> I believe this is from the Lagoon I think it was called the Laguna collection this was from Joanne fabrics I picked this up probably this time last year as a matter of fact let me hold it up so you can see it um, very nice it's a baby blue and white um, mix and yeah the the balance thrown off a little bit but that is what I'm using for my exterior fabric my interior is a cotton this here is a cotton cotton rank a cotton no this was a hundred percent cotton um, nothing fancy to it is just white um, that I chose to um, use as my lining piece and so both of these came from Joanne fabrics and so um, that is what I will be using to put together my dress now when it's time to oh and let me share with you I did get an invisible zipper for those who know and let me just pull it out here I have been struggling with invisible zippers for going on almost three years now and so I did test before um, I started recording the sew along to try to get it and I finally got it we have a beautiful beautiful invisible zipper crossing fingers this will um i can do it again recreate that during the sew along but you will see all of that during the sew along so um also one of the things i want to highlight here is make sure that you look at the cutting layout not necessarily to follow exactly what is suggested but there are some pattern pieces you just want to make sure you flip the right way especially if you have a fabric that um, has designs on it or it's a directional print or something like that make sure your um, your pattern pieces are facing the right way that if you're trying to save on fabric you don't accidentally if you have a directional print you have some going on up here some going on crazy down here <laughs> or something like that so just make sure the way that you lay out your pattern pieces as you are cutting out all of your fabric and so what I want to do now is I'm going to flip to a different um, room because I think I'll be able to show you better um, next to my uh, table. Um, the adjustments. So the adjustments are going to be different for different people. I will explain to you my initial plan for the sew along was to recut out all of my pattern pieces because, and I say that because um, just as a disclaimer when I made this dress initially last summer or no 
no it was around this time last year actually it was be way before summer around this time last year i was 20 pounds um lighter and so over the course of a few um those last later months of the 2019 i put on almost the full 20 uh, no it was about 20 pounds i, I put back on however since <laughs> the start of this year i'm down 13 pounds yay and so what i thought i needed to do because i was more than willing just to trace everything back out um also put um redo all of the um adjustments that I made um I don't have to do that but I will show you um when we go over the um choosing your size and also all of the adjustments I did make um there is one adjustment that I will show during the sew along um it's the sway back adjustment because I did have to do that however I did do the uh, sloping shoulder and gaping neckline but I'll talk about that in the next part so I will be right back Okay, so I moved into a different room. So hopefully you can be able to see me a little bit better when I um, show you a few things. So in total, um, I have made uh, five adjustments on this pattern in order for it to fit me properly. So when I say that I, and I'll go over what those are here shortly. So what I have done, and let me just, let's see here. Look at my notes. I did a, a gaping neckline i did sloping shoulders i lowered the waist i did a sway back adjustment and then i graded between sizes 20 24 and the 28 so yes now this here dress fits fine um i will say when i put this on back in december this was just way too tight everything up in here was just just i couldn't breathe i couldn't move um on this version i do have the cap sleeves for those who did um are not aware the um upton does come with you have to have the pattern but you can get for free the sleeve expansion pack and you have a couple different sleeve options this is the cap sleeve that i put on this you also have if you go to the cashmere website if you once you get the hang of putting it upton together you do have the option of um creating princess seams as opposed to using the um, darts and so if you use the princess seams you wouldn't necessarily have to um, um, wor be worried about uh, using darts so that is just something I wanted to point out now when choosing your size it can be a little tricky if you don't have any help if you do have some help ask if they do not mind helping you out because um when you read in the pattern um you're supposed to uh look at measure your, your the fullest part of your bust now um with that i will also highly recommend wear the bra that you believe that you will be wearing with this particular dress um and so if it's a special occasion dress and you're going to be wearing a special occasion bra, put that bra on. <laughs> but if it's just, you know, a normal everyday dress that you'll be wearing to work or wherever out and about, um, just put whatever bra on that you would normally wear with that. Um, and then uh, she shows in the pattern exactly where the full bust is. And then um, also where uh, the hip placement would be and the waist. And so for me, now again, because I have sewn quite a few cashmere patterns, I happen to know, and let me just step back so you see what I'm saying. I always cut a GH cup for whatever pattern I'm working with with cashmere because I am very full. <laughs> I am very full in the bust. It's, it's um, not enough just to do um, a simple cup size and I'll explain to you in a moment um and think that that will work because i i need more i need room so if you find that you need room i highly suggest when you do your muslin go to the larger size because you can always figure out where you would need to make your adjustments either you can make the adjustment on the pattern or you might figure in some of your tweaks i don't need to go up a whole size i can go down a size however i might still need to adjust um build some room in i would i me personally rather go bigger and adjust out as opposed to um the opposite so totally your preference this is just what i have um been doing with cashmere patterns um since i've been making them and as 
for those who don't know i'll link it down below there is a um jenny did do a blog post um of me participating in the cashmere upton fit clinic and so um and so for those who like to read blogs and whatnot, I will link that down below so you can read through that um, if you like as well. So the pattern again goes from a size 12 to a size 28. So when measuring your full bust, and again, I am going to try not to mess up my dress here because you really, you want that straight across the, the flat of your back, right? And so for me, when I turn around to the front, you can't really see that, but it is, I hope you can see that. I kind of squished my dress around, but if I go across the front there, I don't know if you can, you're not gonna probably be able to see that, but I am a 51 um, full bust measurement. And so when I look at a 51 full bust measurement, I look at, I know I'm not a C or a D cup. I know that I'm not an E or an F cup. Um, but say I didn't know. If I see 51, the first time I see 51, the number 51 on the size chart, and either I will pop up a picture while I'm talking so you, you at least know what I'm talking about, I see that falls into a 22, the first where I'm first seeing a uh, 51. But having made this, <laughs> I know that um, for me, and because I had, had the shoulder, um, my shoulders are a little bit narrow. Um, this is where a lot of my grading came into place. I went down to, to accommodate for the narrow shoulders here, but here is where things starting to get full on me right and so i went um from a size 20 gh cup so i'm still getting that fullness that i need but i didn't need all of this up here um and i still had to make adjustments which i'll talk about even for um going based off of the fit that needed to happen up here and so I went um, from a a um, 20 GH cup, which is 50, and this I went out to a, because my waist is about 40, 45, um, I went out to a size 24, and then for my hip, because my hip um, is about and I wanted this a little bit more loose. My hip is really about a 55, but I went out to a 28 for the hip. So I grade it from, and I'll show you again on the pattern, from a 20, a 20 through here, up through here, and then right above the dart, no, I'm sorry, the notch, right above the notch, then I went, made sure to grade out past the notch, and when I got down right above, the uh, hip then I grade it out to a 28 and then my skirt is easy I just did that in a 28 and so I hope that makes sense I want to now show you the actual adjustments that I made and for the sloping shoulder since I'm not gonna cut retrace and recut out all the pieces again um, because I did lose the weight uh, thank God um, I will direct you to, I did a, a full video on another cashmere pattern, it's actually a Springfield top, where I walk you through how to adjust for sloping shoulders, how to adjust for the gaping neckline. All, that's all in one video, because I had to do both of those things in that video. So far as lowering the waistline, it's the, um, the lengthening shorten line, you determine how much you needed to, to lengthen it by. Again, this is where the, um muslin will come into place because the bottom of the waistband is meant to hit you um at your uh high at your high waist so the waistband and so um you just again you want to do the muslin to kind of save yourself some frustration trust me um because then once you have it you'll you kind of get used to it and then you'll know for future um creations what kind of adjustment you may need to make um, and then 
what other adjustment so the gaping and sloping i have a video for that the waist real easy you'll just figure out how much you think you need to lengthen or shorten it by and make that adjustment on your pattern pieces um, after you've um uh, made, made your muslin and pinched out what you needed um, to know what you need to do either go longer or shorter in your waist now for the sway back i will um, transition to showing you the sway back here in just a moment um, but again i graded between a 20 24 and a 28 <clears throat> i am going to show you <laughs> my pattern um piece after i made all of these adjustments it is a lot and so and at some point as i continue to lose weight i will be i will have to do um these adjustments again um just to accommodate for uh um weight loss and whatnot but that's okay like i said um that is perfectly fine so as of right now i'm good to go and also consider the fabric that you are using when you are um, making these adjustments um, keep track if you decide to use um, do this in a scuba one time do it in some something like a, a woven um, another time or a different type of fabric make note of all of that because you probably need to do um, different bodices for those depending on how it fits you may or may not have to do that but i just wanted to just throw that out there because i mean it's time it, it takes some time. I'm not going to kid you. It will take you some time to, um, you know, to kind of get used to all of this. Oh, and I forgot the other um, adjustment I made. I raised up the back line. So the original Upton is V'd out in the back. I raised up the neckline and um, met that at the curve. But I'll show you that as well. So I knew it was something. I feel like it's one more I'm forgetting to explain to you. But that's still a lot so let me show you the uh, pattern pieces and then we'll transition to showing you how to do the um, sway back adjustment okay so these are my front and my back bodice pieces I'll start with the front first um, and they're in uh, the the changes uh, that I made so Hopefully you can see, I tried to zoom in. Um, I did not re-iron this out. When I started to re-iron out portions of it, I realized at the time when I did all these adjustments, all of this pin here is in the um, ink that if you use the iron, it'll um, go away. So <laughs> I don't wanna do that. So uh, I do apologize that, yeah, this is wrinkly and, um, but I'll try to explain this as best I can. So as I had, show, had shown, I am doing the V-neck. So what you see here is the, let me slide this into the camera. What you see here is the V-neck that was a piece that was traced out. The 3 8 I took a 3 8 inch waist. For, so at that um, lengthen and shorten line, make sure that you have your, so for the front piece, is cut on the fold so make sure so that's your grain line so make sure you are even with your grain line there um, but if you do have to um, make an adjustment on your waist just make sure that you use that length and shorten line there mine was only uh, added I only added three eighths of an inch to the front and I added three eighths of an inch to the back now for the uh, other piece that um, that I was explaining earlier um, my sloping shoulder and my um, gaping neckline. So the sloping shoulder um, did happen on the front bodice piece, but I'll put the link down below or in the eye cards or both showing you how to do that. Um, the gaping neckline also. <clears throat> and so from here, and let me make sure that you can see this. So starting at the top, this is the front bodice piece. I started at a size 20 here through the armpit. So this is 20. I highly recommend if you have this tool, which is the Curve Runner. Hopefully I'm holding this up right. There we go. Um, the Curve Runner, this is a great tool to measure the pattern piece as well as your adjustments that you need to make so you know um, um, this gives you a nice um, 
measurement on how to measure that arm side. So I started here from a 20 through the arm side and right above the dart, if you can tell this is the dart right here, right above the dart is where I began to grade out from right up under the armpit i began to grade out to a 24 right above at the start of the dart i stuck to a 24 through the dart area and again i apologize that I cannot iron this or i will lose all of my my notes on here <laughs> um so don't uh make your markings in uh, disappearing ink that will go away with an iron um but anyway so then i graded out then from right below so i made the adjustment at the waist i started um grading out right below that adjustment that i did at the waist out to a 28. so that is what i did for the front bodice so moving on to the second bodice and again if you have any clarifying questions or you need me to clarify anything after this because i know this could be a little bit confusing um please please leave them in the um, comments and i will try to help you the best i can so here is my my back bodice piece first of all where the v ends you can just measure straight up how far you want it to go and go into the curve to meet the shoulder seam and make sure that you have if you have something like a styling ruler something like this use that to make sure because you you may have to you know play with it a little bit and make sure you get a nice curve in there um, but you want that curve to meet um, right into that uh, shoulder seam so that was one of the adjustments I made again with the sloping shoulder and the gaping I had to take out some gaping because I had some gaping in in the back neckline I took my gaping out here I don't know that you can tell that the pattern pieces are yeah you can tell but those pattern pieces are overlapping that's where I took out um, and I took out I think I had to take out about an inch there um, I don't yes I did I took out gaping of an inch and so that took out the gaping that I had in the original pattern piece when I was again doing a muslin I'll keep saying that over and over do a muslin do a muslin do a muslin because of the fit of this garment um, you want to make sure it fits you properly so do a muslin and you'll be able to play with um, what adjustments will work and I do want to say, I don't think I had to do it for this, but I did have to do it for this, this piece, the front piece, the back piece. I did have to move my dart. Here's the back dart. Because once I um, did the, I will say once I did the gaping um, neckline adjustment, it shifted everything down here. So my dart went a little wonky. So you have to um, straighten that back out. Um, to create your new grain line to make sure all of that is uh, straightened back out so i did do that making sure everything was good and i did a, another muslin i probably did i can't recall off the top of my head but it wouldn't put it past me if i did three or four muslins um because i think maybe if i recall correctly i didn't correct the this dart and one of the muslins, the fit back here was a little wonky and it was just because I didn't fix this to make sure it was on the grain. Um, so make sure you pay attention to that. But again, my back pattern piece is still going from a 20. Same thing back here. You don't have a side dart, but there is a notch on the side. That's where I began to grade out from that 20 out to a 24. Same thing here below where I made my adjustment. Remember, because you are breaking up that dart, and that's another reason you want to pay attention to that dart, is then where I started grading back out to a 28. So another thing I had to do <laughs> back here, I know it's a lot. I had to do a um, sway back adjustment of one and is marked on here, one and a quarter inch. I had to take out, and let me see if you can even see that. Can you see that paper underneath there? I had to take out a quarter of an inch. And how that was determined is once I did my muslin, I then had to go and 
C, pinch out with the muslin on. If you can get some help, get some help. I didn't have any help, so I'll just explain to you what I did. <laughs> I very, 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 very carefully with the um, bodice piece inside out, I pinched out as best I could. The, um, the extra fabric was there and kind of wiggled my way out of it <laughs> and saw how much I would need to take away in order to get that sway back. And as you saw on my dress, um, that in the back, it fits really, really well back there. So those are the adjustments I wanted to show you. Again, I apologize for, um, I didn't realize at the time when I did this that I was marking it all up in disappearing ink um, with heat. So probably one of my friction pans, I'm sure. But let's move into how to do the sway back. So I just did a real rough um, trace of the back bodice piece of the Upton. And this is traced of my final. Um, so you would do this on your, uh, pattern piece after you've made some muslins, maybe you figure out first, which adjustment is most important first. Are you going to do your bust first? You really need, you hopefully don't have to worry about the bust because of the grading that the opportunities you have with grading and the darts that that wasn't my issue but um taking consideration if you have gaping in the shoulder areas then you need that gaping um neckline adjustment do you need adjustment in the um in sloping shoulders in the waist does that need to be lengthened then you know when you kind of have all of that figured out and you still see that bunching in the back oops you can't see that that bunching back here, you know, is still a lot of fabric. That's where you want to determine by trying on your muslin. You got your muslin down to, okay, I'm just down to my sway back now. <laughs> I'm in a home stretch. You've pinched out and you've determined I need to take out, you know, an inch or whatever the case may be. So now I'm going to walk you through what I followed and what I will do. I'm not going to take credit for this. What I, um, this was shared with me um actually during the fit clinic so i will share with you the blog post that is very good very easy very self-explanatory on how to make your adjustment for your sway back plus also if you're not into um um reading blogs and you want to see different ways to do this is just one of many ways to do a sway back so this is not the end all be all definitely do whatever you're most comfortable with but there are other videos here on youtube just look up sway back adjustment i know um i believe her name is alex morgan i believe that's her name um she and if it's wrong i'll put it on the screen but she um has a sway back um i know sure fit designs has a sway back um, adjustment out there so there are a few youtubers that you can look up if you don't like the blog post because what i'm going to show you is exactly what i saw in the blog so let me get the rest of my tools here and i'll be right back okay so now you have your pattern piece the um one thing you want to do if you are using your pattern piece to make the adjustment on is um, make sure you have drawn in your um, seam allowance around the pattern i just roughly did it it's a half inch for the bot the back for the upton um so i just put in a half inch seam allowance so after you've taken your muslin piece off and you figured out how much excess fabric you need to pinch pinch out the back so again remember this is the back piece you need to figure out how much um you need to um pinch out of the back and make sure you've drawn in your if you're working with the pattern piece draw in your seam allowance figure out where on the pattern you are going to make that adjustment so did you have more bunching up this way was it more so around here or um down here depending on where it is is where will make a difference um where you uh need to make your adjustment at so say for me um I, my bunching was more so in this area so i'm just gonna kind of scribble a little bit there hopefully you can see that actually i'll use a different marker this 
this is the area here yeah that that's much better you can see that is where i found that i had most of my excess fabric so that is the area i am going to want to pinch out and for me i was looking to pinch out an inch and a quarter so um when you are doing that pinching out say this was the muslin and you had to you pinched out about this much you would have had to in order to know how much you total you need to take out you have needed to pin both sides of the fabric and then once you unfolded it you would have known how much um, the distance between the two marks then so say this was unpinned the distance between the two marks um, is the placement um, for how much you would need to take out for that particular area and we're going to pretend that I've done that and I am now um, marking that placement that's why I put the X's here on my actual pattern pieces now let me draw this so you can see it clear so again I'm just doing this rough so you can at least see but you want to locate the midpoint of these two marks so these two marks I just made here in green um, you want to pinpoint the midpoint between these two marks and draw a straight line from from that across the back piece but not through the side seam so you are going to tell me use a different color marker here and grab my ruler okay I have my ruler let me try to zoom in so you can see so hopefully you can see that so um, between these two marks I didn't necessarily again I'm doing this rough so you can at least see it so halfway between these two marks is about right here so I'm gonna mark that in blue so this is about halfway this blue line now is halfway between these two marks so what you're gonna do now is draw two lines from each marking to the point in the side seam where the first line ended so essentially you need to draw and I'm gonna let me zoom back out so essentially what you need to do that line that you start you started on the other side draw that all the way to your side seam where the um and this is why that's why it's important that you uh you can't see that that's why it's important that you mark your seam allowance because you don't want to take the line through the seam allowance just to that seam allowance and then what you're going to do then is these two lines that you drew i have them here in green you're going to draw you're going to put your put your um, ruler at the point here at the um, seam allowance I drew through the seam allowance just so you can see but at the seam allowance where this these two lines are you're going to draw a dotted line all to meet this end down here so essentially start your ruler and maybe if I went this way you'll be able to see it better yeah you'll probably be able to see it better so you're starting from here and you're going to draw a dotted line here and you're going to start from the other line at the at the seam allowance all the way here so let me just show that to you so essentially you're gonna go like this and i'm just roughly doing this make sure you, you're marched, matched up to that seam allowance and just draw your dashed lines and what it is is going out into if you can see that yeah let me zoom in some I want you to see this so what you did was use those two lines that you drew and then you just leading dash lines into that seam allowance not through it not through it but just to it so you're doing that for the top and the bottom
So now what you want to do is grab your scissors. And what you're going to do is you're going to cut from that center back seam at the uh, where you drew that line there. And what you're going to do is cut all the way down to that seam allowance, but not through it. So essentially, this is what you're going to do. Hopefully you can see that. Let me zoom back out. Yeah. You can see that so you're gonna cut all the way through to that point where that other end not through the seam allowance remember just to that side seam and then on the other now flip it over now you have this this hinge well not the hinge yet we're about to create the hinge you have the opening turn it ever so slightly and then, because you need that hinge, because you have to overlap, right? So here on this side, just snip up to that point, but not through, because you're just going to create that hinge. So right there, that's it. You just need a little bit of opening here. Hopefully you can see that. You have that little bit of opening. See that? And then... Slowly turn her all together. If you clip through that end, don't worry. Just t put a piece of tape there and reinforce that area and then clip in again to make sure that you have it. Now, this top piece, all you do is pick that up. Remember this second line we had drew down here at the bottom? That bottom line? Pick up that pattern piece and just meet it. Meet it. And this mine is, again, I'm doing this on one that was already adjusted. Um, but what you want to do is then go ahead and take that. That took out your voila. That has taken out that excess fabric. Again, once you've done it, um, I know I'm saying this a lot. Make another muslin to make sure you didn't take out too much or you need to take out a little bit more. Just play with it a little bit but that should give you the results that you are looking for and then you will need to correct now you see the grain line you need to correct the grain line and maybe even even out this um, seam line so it's not curved so for me this here because that dart went about I want to say with my other adjustments I had to make and then I made the gaping neckline for me if you don't have to make as many adjustments as me you might not have to worry too much um, about uh, moving your dart or anything over but for me I did a waist adjustment I did the um, the gaping neckline adjustment which led down into pat through my dart um, I had to shift my dart and everything so let's just assume you don't have to uh, you have, take that into consideration but assume that you don't have to you do need to straighten out your you need do need to correct your grain line so remember with your grain line I'm gonna turn this over remit so you can at least see I'm gonna move this out and I'm gonna zoom in so you can see so this is where it starts veering off <laughs> because that's where we made our adjustment we don't want that remember you want your grain line to be perpendicular to the hem of whatever it is that you're working with so for us is the bottom of this bodice so I'm taking my ruler which you can barely see because it's clear and that straight part of the grain line that was already drawn here I am going to redraw starting from that point up we're not going this way because this is how much the grain line went over we're not cutting this on the grain it still needs to be cut straight so then make sure let me show you just make sure you redrawn your grain line everything is uh, back where it needs to be and you have your sway back adjustment okay so please leave a comment down below if any of that was 
you know you didn't quite catch something or you think I need to explain something a little bit more please let me know and I'll just try to address that in a different video if I need to or I'll explain it as best I can in the description box I will leave the link to the blog post it is so super duper easy to do a sway back um, and you all know me I am a visual learner so for me to understand it what was this now two years ago that I did the flip fit clinic for me at that time in my um, learning curve with making adjustments to understand that simple blog post when I say it's simple it is simple and very easy to understand I just kind of went over at high level but you can go over it more so I'll leave the link down below to that and I'll leave a link to the video showing you how to do the complete sloping shoulder and gaping neckline adjustment so that is it for part one I know it is a, it's a bit much I know that's okay but trust me trust me trust me um, these adjustments you will be able to um, you'll know for your woven what you can do on all of your patterns or what you automatically out the gate know you need to do for your patterns it depends on how those patterns are drafted not every pattern company drafts the same so if you think for a sway back um, for most patterns you might be able to get away with for example for me I did an inch and a quarter that might work in pretty much any other pattern that I work with however if I'm unsure I'm just gonna do a muslin um, only because even if I do to do a sway back on a different type of pattern where the drafting is a little bit different I may have taken out too much or not have taken out enough so it just really all depends you also can de determine that by measuring your pattern pieces so after you have made all your adjustments say for your your sway back if you know how um the the back length if you measured the pattern piece the back length pattern piece to the exception of the seam allowance don't include the seam allowance and you measure you have the measurement of the, the length of your back you can pretty you can probably determine from that how much you you need to take out but there again you need to take in the full drafting potential of that particular pattern company unless you're totally familiar with them then you don't have to worry about that that type of thing but I would still highly suggest unless that works for you met you can just go from measuring the pattern pieces against your own body measurements and know you need to take out this from this or that from this um, for me as I have said before I am on a weight loss journey so I'm losing weight so for me just simple measuring the pattern pieces and then measure my body may not always work because I lose in different areas at different times in my weight loss journey so I may start out losing up here um, a lot in the beginning and then it changes and then it's down below or my inner thighs or something like that so determine um, what's best for you in that process but again I know I know I know you don't want to hear it make a muslin and you may have to make several um, but be patient with yourself um, I remember during the fit clinic it was it wasn't an easy process it was a huge learning curve for me and I forget across how many weeks it took us um, to go through the process but by all means take your time if you have any questions please let me know leave them down in in the comment section stay tuned for part two it will be putting together the skirt piece cut out all your pattern pieces cut out all your lining pieces interface everything and then come back and let's put start putting together our skirt and start putting together our bodice on the third day all right everybody we'll see you on tomorrow bye